Hello, everyone. Uh, we will start to get going. Uh, great to have all you here. Great to have Anne here. Welcome. And, and uh, from Perkona, indeed, Dimitri, Runa, and, and Monty and David, who needs no introduction. So, so we have now heard some presentations on, on how to make money on open source. Uh, so now I, I will start with the question, perhaps, that, 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 that uh, where do you agree and where do you disagree? Maybe where do you disagree? <laughs> What the question the disagree about? Uh, on the statement of how to make money on open source. So, so I mean, there was um, I made some statements that indeed you need to go to the cloud. Open core is, is doable but fairly small, and, and services is of course a reliable way, but not not to really build a scalable business. But, but do you see a way to really build a big business in other ways than than cloud or 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 really focus on open core? You are trying to marry it with the full open source. And how is it going? Exactly. The, 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 the stock market just now, the product we are doing excellent. So do you, would you say that MariaDB is a services company or a, a product company? We are kind of in between, so we are kind of both. Do you mean to do you agree? Uh, yeah, but, we are, we are, what we are doing is we are creating more tools. And though that, uh, and we, for example, we do have uh, max scale, and we're going to sell it, so that definitely will be a commercial tools. Then we are product company. Okay, but do you think you can make a lot of money on that? Uh, not a lot, but tens of millions. Okay. <laughs> so that's a ambitious. The time delayed licenses model. I haven't seen yeah. anyone try that at the last stage. Yeah. Hashicorp. Hashicorp. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think MariaDB is very much a product company. Yeah. I mean, the component, the service component that MariaDB has uh, in its revenue is normal for many software companies. There are other companies. I can give an example of Atomatica. Atomatica was not open source. It is not open source, yet, but it also had like 20, 25 ish percent of the revenue <coughs> coming from services. That's okay. okay. But still, a big part of the revenue is coming from licenses. So it's a product. Okay. And uh, especially around uh, catalogs, we have lots of extensions that is only uh, not needed by open source companies, basically just for SaaS vendors, and some of those will be uh, probably a delayed open source license or something similar. Okay. And, and what do you think of Percona? Is Percona a product company or a services company? We're a solutions company. <laughs> 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 how, how would you define that? Uh, how, would how, how would you explain it to uh, us explain who don't know? We, 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 we present we don't know. Well, uh, we offer solutions, so we have software and services. Yeah. We strictly, if you want to, strictly monetize by services. So we don't charge for any of our software. But we okay. know that. In our offerings, we speak like SaaS in terms of recurring revenue. How do we get that recurring revenue? And um, we've discovered, the data suggests, that the more software, open source software of ours that we put out that our customers are using, the higher renewal rates um, from the services. So it's all about, I think you had mentioned it, uh, Max had mentioned it, building what customers need and want, yep. and giving that outstanding service or Experience is probably even a better word because of experiences with the software and with the services as well. So, okay. yeah. But from your perspective, you'd put us probably squarely in the camp of services right now. So, what do you think your valuation multiple would be <laughs> on revenue? On revenue, um, from folks I talked about, it, it, it will work with your EBIT as well, not just on your revenue. So, probably in the three to five. Okay. Yeah, and not, not the yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I would even agree. All right. All right. But, but by the way, if you have any questions to each other, you can also disrupt and, and, and ask. Um, uh, but do you think that, I mean, one question in, in open source, do you think there's acceptable and non acceptable ways of earning money? Yeah? What I find unacceptable is going back on your promise to your customers and your users. So if we You've all talked about, you hear about people changing their licensing model. If you're a user, that creates uncertainty, particularly yeah. in the infrastructure space. Someone isn't going to want to make a bet if they think that all of a sudden the license is going to change. So yeah. it's not directly on the monetary, but that's what's driving it, is trying to get those valuations. So if you believe in your convictions and you've put out a certain license, I don't believe you should be changing that license because 
your shareholders, which isn't always your stakeholders, yeah. want a higher return. They knew what they were getting to begin with. So that's my point of view. You talked about having, you know, starting out as a restricted license. And it's always okay to change to more open license, but doing it restricted after two years is like not popular. So it's always safer to start a little bit more restrictive because okay. you can open up, it's safe. But uh, let's, uh, let's look at it from the other side. As an entrepreneur, uh, you notice that your business is going bankrupt, you, you can't survive. And the only uh, version you have, you have your, your software, and then you basically said, I can't support it anymore. Or you say that the next version, I have to change the license. I still think that's okay but if that's you communicate that greatly, and you only do that to be able to keep uh, the work uh, work uh, first force uh, employed. So they are part of, uh, part of it. But uh, if you, you're already doing good money and uh, and uh, you can survive, and then you change the license just to get a lot of uh, more profitable and basically keeping everybody hostage that uh, are depending on your software, then it's different. So I think that's a three year. Yeah. Uh, no, I think that we keep talking about okay, open source versus other software, right? Yeah. And, and I think that actually the difference between open source and the other software, binary software, is actually starting to disappear, right? Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, like open, the software was very simple, right? And open source meant free. So if you saw the code, you could use this software because you see the code, you can actually use it, and that's all. Right? That's all. Mm -hmm. Now the software is getting so complex that the fact that you see the code doesn't make you capable of using this software safely, mm -hmm. right? So, so it, it gives other advantages, like it, the, the, the code is transparent, the code is probably more kind of uh, uh, reliable, and there are no backdoors, and so on so and so forth. But, but in reality, the, the, the whole fact that you see the, the source code doesn't allow you using it don't free. Mm -hmm. So my understanding is that yeah, I may be a bit, a bit provocative, but my understanding is that like 10 years down the road, 10 years from now, we might not be talking about open source and you know binary software, just the same business models for both. Yeah. Maybe so, or maybe when everything is uh, kind of automated and provided through a well, well, service as a service. The complexity it, keeps it, growing. Right? I mean, it, goes, so it matters only when you yeah, want to touch the software and have it run maybe locally or on your own. But on the point of acceptable and non-acceptable ways of earning money, what do you want to think on on the Amazon example, which is unfortunately what we use here, that, that, that uh, you know, already 15 years ago, I remember when we discussed that here yeah, Amazon is using a lot of MySQL and paying zero, and, and, and then the claim was, well, it's good for us because it's, it's a lot of popularity of MySQL, and, and at some point they will start paying, but still, they are not paying. So, so do you still think it's, it's okay what they have been doing and uh, earning hundreds of millions on your code yeah, without they, paying? Yes, that was the, and start, a load from the start and we take that into, into consideration. They're not breaking anything, yeah. they're following the rules. Okay. I think they could. They should give more back. We actually are very happy that they're sponsoring the, okay. the foundation and uh, I see actually some actions in, in uh, at Amazon. They, I know started uh, groups that actually Participate with have uh, people employed working on MariaDB, working on Postgres, uh, working orders, and contributing back. Of course, they could do more, but uh, I couldn't say that they are evil in any way. Okay, so so may I ask you one one question? If you would go back 15 years and not sell MySQL to Sun Microsystems, but but be forced to keep it independent for 10 years more, uh, would you have changed to AGPL? Probably not. Why not? You would have earned hundreds of millions in the cloud. Oh, uh, <laughs> that, 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 that basically, I wouldn't have need to and just uh, do it for, for the money. Uh, I mean, always good to make money, but I would have come back for the promises. And uh, the, the same thing that if I would take an existing module and make it that suddenly a closed source, I didn't think that actually where I would find totally acceptable. I would not have changed trail to clip. I might change the time delay to open source. Okay. And the end of the source, yeah. I think, is a clearer promise. Yeah. But I mean, the market has proven with Mongo and others that MySQL could have been making billions in revenue. 
I think we made enough. Yeah, you! <laughs> Maybe we did, but... You have, you have to start up. You can't change the road in the middle. You can start up, Monko, you can succeed. But I will actually you try to change the road when you have 100 million users, so you start to say, now different rules. No. That's not proper. Yeah. I would actually have done it more free. I mean, basically, because we were GPL, if I were to go back, I would change the license so that it, after three years, it would have become BSD. And because then all this argument that that uh, we use Postgres because it's a BSD, we would have actually got to be part of that movement too. Okay. 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 So, and what what would you do, a founder today with open source distribution, say, what's the best way of doing business? What would you recommend in terms of uh, business model? For aspiring founders? Yeah. yeah. If they have something out which is gaining traction. So <laughs> First off, I appreciate all the founders because I'm not a founder. <laughs> being, being very clear, um, you know, I have spoken to some in the open source space who are very clear that they didn't want to do open source because of just this conversation that it's taking, and other people are, dare I say, more successful with what they created. So, um, if you're a founder, it's it's, what's the founder's dilemma? I'm going to change the words a little bit because some female, do you want to be sovereign or rich? The mm -hmm. original one is, do you want to be king or rich? I think that that's really key is to, mm -hmm. to understanding as early on as you can. Um, it's hard to know how you're going to evolve over time. Um, but I would I would choose it carefully. Um, and I think just be clear. Like the, the example of GitLab, what I appreciate about GitLab is and maybe it wasn't always from the beginning, but they're very clear and very transparent and open with a lot. And this is what's open core, and this is what you're paying for. No apologies. I think that's great. Um, users want to be able to be successful. You said, um, Dimitri mentioned how complicated software is now, and everyone just expects it to work and work fairly easily. So if you can make that easier, then yeah, absolutely, you should be compensated for that, but just be clear. And so, probably open core. Yeah. Well, what do you think of Rune and not Rune? And, uh, well, you I, have a lot of open source events. I personally like very much the idea of business uh, source license okay. because basically, again, in, in our paradigm, the, the enterprise will be paying for software not because they cannot get access to the source code, but because they want uh, it to be safe, because they want it to be kind of reliable, transparent, they want to have access to like uh, support, security updates, and so on and so forth. So that, that, that's why they're paying, not because they cannot kind of. Uh, get access to the source code. But I still think uh, that, yeah, so that, that, that's, I think, the future. I still think that the same business model that we started with, Marie did with, uh, actually, with, sorry, with MySQL, the first thought is that we want to do something that is available for all, but we need to have a license so a small fraction of the people have to pay, because otherwise we can't uh, have a business mm -hmm. and employ people. As long as you keep that in mind and then wonder how the fraction is, then you have a reasonable model impended what you do. Right. But I think it also depends on your own. If you're a really good developer, you might not succeed in a normal commercial market, but you might succeed in an open source market. So like by choosing what you're good at yourself, you have a better chance, even if it's not the best possible, but it's what you are the best at. Can it really work? Because if, if you're open and it works they well. see <laughs> yeah, yeah, but if, I mean, if it's open and, and, and visible there, I mean, if it's not well written and well produced and a good software, then well, that's 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 assumption was that you are, you are the expert. Yeah, yeah, well, anyway. I'm saying if you're a really good developer, like we were hopeless at the commercial side to start with, as you should know a lot. <laughs> uh, but I mean, we were really good at spreading the software yeah. and we concentrated all our focus on that, for everything. Even like when we had stuff we could have done better, we just skipped it completely yeah. and thought other people would be better than that. But if we get another million users, we someone else will solve it. And that's it turned out to be true. Okay. I was doing up right in the code. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So any questions from the audience? So I mean, we talk a lot about open source software. Do you think there's any monetization in open hardware, which is something that's coming up on? The, the thing with open hardware, you still need somebody to produce it and sell it and, and give it to users. So, I mean, if you have, have control over that and can do that cheaper and, uh, than anybody else, and you are the one innovating it, so you get out your the next version, version out faster, then yes. 
for paying people salaries? Yes. For making a billion dollar company? No. <laughs> but maybe a 20, 50 million dollar company which can still be a good thing, yes. Yeah. More questions? Yep. So you're talking a lot about uh, delayed uh, so, uh, uh, licenses, basically. From a developer standpoint, how do you see that versus uh, the, the owner and the founder's view? Mm -hmm. Because as a developer, I prefer either uh, very clear on because the delay, if it's like three years, I would never use three-year-old software, for example. Yeah, it's a, it's a, so that actually something is wrong with them. I went wrong uh, with Maxke, but it, Initially, it was supposed to be two years, and then somebody, without telling me, changed it to four years. And I agree, four years is not. But the whole idea with, uh, with why we create a business source and promoting it, because I hate open core, because uh, there's still something I can't use under any conditions. And if company uh, disappears, suddenly those modules out. With, with, at least with the delayed open source, as a, if I am... Enterprise and I buy it, I know it will not disappear. So it's more a question about giving a very clear <coughs> security of no lock in. Okay, you have a lock in for two years, as you have to pay, but then you are free. But well, you can really go back to a two year old version. No, no, no. If you already pay for it, then you get the latest one. And you know that if the company disappears, there's no hidden modules, nothing you can use. So it, it, it removes a part of this. Uh, uh, one vendor. And that was the main purpose of the, the license. And I wanted to help new entrepreneurs having a way to earn money and at the same time not having them to use open core. Mm -hmm. Have you followed the HashiCorp discussion? Yeah. What do you think about it? I think HashiCorp did the, the right things and uh, 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 according to the slides they're still doing the right, the right thing. But I mean of course people are saying that this is not free anymore. So and you think I, the forking initiative will work? I, 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 I should continue in, uh, to uh, in event and they have the money for doing that. Of course they will win. Okay. Give me this. Well, 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 I think if, if somebody can uh, point out what are the real kind of disadvantages of business source, what, 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 what are the problems? Basically, well, it's, it's a closed, in a way it's a... Commercial, it's a commercial license. Yes, yes, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, I mean, those who complain, it's like those who don't want to pay. Quality side between open source yeah. and free. Yeah, yeah. longer. Yeah. Look, that, 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 that's the core of it, right? What you're really saying is that you can't go from a paid subscription to the free, but yeah. without stepping back two years so, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, without stepping back. Yeah, a couple of years. Yeah. Without. Uh, but there's yeah. lots of people who doesn't upgrade and run. Uh, 10 years of software, they're very happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's some other things, but that doesn't change the core question of yeah. moving from what you're running right now, mm -hmm. updating it and going. But you shouldn't compare it to open, uh, open source. You should uh, compare it to open core and that you have a fallback. So, uh, they, yeah, but, and that's what they intend. But HashiCorp, for example, went from open source, mm -hmm. open core, to yeah. uh, the business of right? Yeah, but uh, yeah. I mean, they, that's, that's basically something we agree that you don't normally shouldn't do. But the question is more that will the license work for them? Yeah. And I think that for the enterprise who are prepared to pay, that's much better than open core. And that's my statement. Yeah. I just make it clear. Yeah. So if you were to start a company now, uh, would you go the business to consumer route or the business to business route? <coughs> uh, it depends on the, the, the idea I have. If it's a uh, it is something for the masses or not? <laughs> There's more money to be made in business to consumer or business to business? Well, you have to just study. Sorry? I mean, you have an idea for one of them. <laughs> you can't just sit and choose the market and then try to find an idea. I mean, of course, the ideal company probably to, is, a, is an app that is viral that every day one user from the mobile spreads to two and then it's just a number of months and you have the whole globe. If you want to change, of course you should sell things you can sell to everyone in the whole world. Yeah, yeah. That's what uh, that's like. From, from investor perspective, B2B business model is much easier because businesses are rational. They're yeah. buying software yeah. because they want to save money or make more money. Yes. Why consumers are buying software, nobody knows. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, no one it's, don't like it's games. It's, it's, it's not the second, second reason is that with, with B2B software, kind of your downside is 
more protected. Like if you if you get I don't know hundred, maybe a couple hundred enterprise paying you, you already have a small business. I mean you have revenue. I mean you can pay your costs. With consumer software, it's it's quite binary. You either get millions or you are dead. So maybe this is quite you know uh, polarized. <laughs> Yeah. How do you guys see the future and potential convergence or divergence between AI and open source? AI is more data than actual code. Mm. So and the models are probably more and more general but it, 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 knowledge and open source and so forth, but then indeed it's data that is yeah. Uh, yeah, the data sets. That's what that's the proprietary part yeah. of uh, AI. That's the data sets, not, not the code. Yeah. We are models. Right, and the cost. I mean, what's the cost for all these data sets and managing all that data versus open source projects and people willing to contribute? There's a huge cost differential and um, resource constraints potentially that we're going to hit. Well, AI is a, is a tool, and uh, looking at how things are going, actually, the AI tools that are open source are starting to be as good as the commercial ones. So, yeah. Uh, I just think that everything will be open source. But then yeah, we will have AI, uh, AI, AI's writing themselves in open source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, soon AI will write all the code. So, so. so what do you think about that, by the way? Because I, indeed I heard from some of the start. You know, some of the startups I mentioned in my talk, that some of the startups we meet already, I mean, half of the code is written by AI, I mean, by young people. Uh, what do you think about where, where will the world go in terms of? Software development. If you have a problem, they can't put a copyright on the code. So the actual the code has no value. But maybe no, if it fills in the gaps. Yeah. That actually is true. But if you're going to, if you're an investor, you're coming in and see, here's code that <coughs> the company doesn't own. But my that, 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 that actually is the problem. But AI is not, I think, writing kind of complex code. I mean, there is a lot of code which is like, Ventures, you know, you it will get better all the time. I mean, it's yeah, well, but it's, 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 it's copying. not your core kind of competence. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's better at copying. So, if somebody yeah. else has done it, and lots, let's say, if lots of other people have done it, AI can reproduce that and, and ignore all copyrights and ignore that this actually is a commercial code. So. Yeah, but it might be, you know, five, ten years that when you have your plumber ERP, <laughs> that you ask the chat GPT, please write me a plumber ERP that does these and these and these things. You can. And, uh, at, well, least, we, uh, at least with not with, with current uh, uh, laws because you don't own it. You can't copy. Maybe you can host it as a service. Yeah, you can host it as a service, yes, but you can't uh, sell it. Oh, you know, the, the, look, uh, the accounting uh, software didn't kill the accounting as a job, right? And same way, the AI will not kill the developer uh, as a job. Yeah. It will just make it like yeah. <coughs> more focused on complex stuff, yeah. less kind yeah. of. You know, yeah. no, the programmers are supposed to go out of business back in the 80s when you had the fourth generation programming languages. There's supposed to be none tenth as many programmers then. I read it in plenty of newspapers. <laughs> in the 80s, programmer was like, uh, like a handyman doing everything. Right? Yeah. Now we have different categories, like from architect to like uh, someone who is just uh, polishing something. <laughs> and, you know, if, if you look, look at, at a building, or, or for example, like 30, 40 years back, uh, like software was like a very simple cabin, cabin right? So you take your axe and you build the cabin by, by yourself. Now the software is like a multi-story modern building with all you know pipes and infrastructure, electricity and systems and blah blah blah. And there are different kind of people building this who are in, in construction works. Some of them are architecting the building, how it will be, you know, keeping. Together, not falling apart, right? Some people just, you know, uh, how we call it, the putting some plaster on the walls. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. They're very low paid people, right? Yeah. And it, it's still programming, but this part of programming should be, it should be replaced by AI. Sure. Yeah. As soon as possible, because that's it's not adding value. Not adding value. Not yeah. much value. Yeah. Yeah. So, by the way, one question to Monty and David. Back 20 years ago, there was at these conferences, open source conferences, Richard Stallman and others walking with these weird hats and stuff and saying that all software should be free. So is the free software movement dead? Actually, the GPL is still very popular, so no. Well, it's not free, really. 
The real advocates thought that all software should really be fully free, liberal, kind of nobody really owns copyright, what not. It should be like the. No, no, in no, your presentation, the, the, well, the. Copyright is different. Okay. Jim Bell is free, maybe that's the one definition of okay. the software nowadays. But uh, that's still, you can still have the copyright of that. Yeah. Well, when I heard we have stolen back in the mid 1980s for the first time, my view was like this kind of software should be as popular and as easy to get to as commercial proprietary software. And I think that has been fulfilled. Okay. So. Uh, well, why nobody is asking you? Uh, closing should be free, or food should be free. I mean, if you're not interested in quality, yeah. I, I was born in the Soviet Union, which means that many stuff was almost free. But the quality, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's physical versus virtual. No, I mean, you know, my topic is uh, this, this movement, like, okay, software should be free. Okay, why? Why, why one product, like, uh, it's a product. You, yeah. really, you put so you get effort to build it, why, why it should be free? Or you get right. your left, good left shoe you get for free, but you have to buy the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would say it should be free because it makes better business sense for you as an entrepreneur because you want to have everybody help you. So that's one reason. No, I think we're all living yeah. in, uh, in a system, in a, in a market economy, yeah. where you know there is a balance between what you pay and what you get. Right? You pay more, you get high quality goods. And mm. why, why? No, uh, 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 compare Oracle and Maria in that sentence, please. <laughs> well, there, are certain, <laughs> there are certain deviations from that. Let's say more, there are deviations always, right? There are exceptions, but the exceptions mostly kind of conf to confirm the rule. Yeah. In most cases, I mean, more expensive stuff is of better quality yeah. in, in real world. Mm -hmm. So, why software is such a kind of outstanding thing that the laws of the market economy would not work? Yeah. It, it doesn't work in the Oracle uh, MariaDB example because the one paying for the Oracle probably believes that it's more quality. Yeah, but that's not that's what they pay, unless <laughs> otherwise they would migrate to. No, no, that's not quality, that's marketing. Well, yes, yeah, but perceived quality. Quality is subjective. Mm -hmm. uh, so, more questions? Yeah? No? Yeah, the question is a bit. <coughs> can you come closer so we can hear you? The, the question is a bit the contrary. Do you think that the growth of software movement is the no. So no. I, 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 I think most. Repeat the question for the camera. Yeah, uh, is closed software movement dead? Uh, I would say that that the majority of consumers and customers out there, unfortunately, don't care. <laughs> they want a certain service. They want certain things to be done. They're ready to pay for it for convenience and whatnot. Uh, they don't, you know, if they get it for a reasonable price, the value they need, they they are happy. Uh, then there are some part of the market that really cares about the open source in this, and, and that's that's another part. I, I'm going to say no, maybe yeah. because of yeah. your professions, yeah. right? <laughs> Where are the valuations? What valuations, and have we seen? And and there's been a bit of a pullback that it's not revenue at all costs any longer. That profitability matters. But how many years? And this isn't just in software, but how many years did Amazon run at a deficit? and look at how highly valued they are. So entrepreneurs going out there and looking for their valuation, and like you said, consumers may not care if it works and it's at a price point that they're willing to pay for, and the entrepreneur can get a huge value from it. But that's how, gonna be close. how many trillions of possible market cap has open source removed from possible closed source companies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but who's in the trillions yeah. of regular guys, yeah, I mean, right? Saying, right? It's it's not to, yeah, but it tends not to create big companies, but it certainly removes them. Yes, but uh, technology, like new uh, kind of disruptive technologies, they do remove market cap from the legacy players. Yeah. That's what happened. And in my view, open source is kind of superior model compared to binary to, to closed source software. And my personal vision is that 10 years from now, most of software will be open source. So either business source or open core, but like enterprise software. I'm not talking about yeah. consumer, you know, phone apps, and, but most okay. of the enterprise software, most of it will be open source in the sense that either it will be business source <laughs> license or open core license or some other license which we And still... a clear monetization path. Hmm? You would see a clear monet yes. way to monetize, yes. a clear monetization it's path. It's already there because now I see that enterprise is paying for software not because they don't have access to the source code. They're paying for it because they want higher quality, higher security, right? And in terms of developing software, open
open source is much more superior because you leverage the community, it's transparent, it's safe, there is no lock-in, so there are a lot of advantages for interface. And that's why it it's, it's, uh, should be cheaper because it's actually uh, kind of more efficient in terms of how it is developed. I think that, yeah, but as an answer, the, we also ask the question, the total, uh, total writing of the enterprise, but if you say that it's close to us, then no, because uh, even if there may be more lines of written for open source uh, uh, in GitHub, all the apps, basically 99% is closed source, yeah. and probably will be, so the and I think, apps are different, I think exactly like apps that, different. But, yeah, but, yeah, but I think the applications are, you know, the one that is really sold to the end user or end customer or uh, consumer, those apps are closed source, they are services that you get, but they are built using open source infrastructure and tools and whatnot, and they are paying for those pieces in a suitable business model. So it's a combination. Like, look what's happening. Like, yeah. For example, Ma Ma Maxim mentioned uh, like a Belgian company, company from, from here, from Brussels, Odoo. Right. That's an ERP software. It's an open source ERP software. If somebody told you like 10 years back that uh, there would be an open source ERP software, would you believe? <coughs> there are people who try it. I met people who yeah. try it. Yes, but now it became a reality. I think David, you invested in a successful. That means that something is. changed in, in the yeah. mentality. Yeah. So there is a successful open source ERP system, an app. Yeah. David yeah. invested in a CRM open source. Yes, yeah. yeah. they go back. Yeah. 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 CRM. I mean, I think it's more of customers getting used to it uh, yes. than the actual products being that bad before. It's just that customers like, I don't really know this. Exactly. Exactly. So we had an open app. Yep. Uh, is closed source of the, on this format then? Sorry? Is closed source, source. Is, is closed source on this format then? If, if, if closed source software is not there, as, as you all seem to conclude, is closed source on this format for databases then? Like, say, companies that create a database that have the format on this closed source. Do they have a place in, in the... But then that's basically data. If you have access to data or can store data in a way, so... I mean, that's also a business model. I mean, the, the, I would say that if, if the only one, you are the only one who can uh, access that, then it's a closed source company. But mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't understand what the, the question had. Well, you can, you, you can have... Uh, you can have uh, the format on this, and you can have the software open source that knows how to, how to read the format and access the format, then everything on top is closed, uh, is, is, uh, is, is, is closed source. Mm -hmm. And but, but, what, what, well, yeah. It's not coming to, uh, what they, can, a, can a database survive if they come up with completely closed source? And that would depend on what's the value for the customer, or why would they buy it, why would they use that instead of open source alternative. If you have a really good reason for, for doing that, to, to, for example saying that I'm using quantum bits uh, uh, to, uh, and nobody else can access it and it's 100% secure, and you can prove it, then you have business. It's more like what you're competing with. If yeah. someone else does the same thing open source, you're not going to survive. Unless you have superb, enormous superb sales, which is unlikely. Uh, so, like, it's always what you're competing with. If you have enough value, if you can find a small niche where you can sell a closed source product, closed source database, sure. But how long? Who knows? All right, more questions? Yeah. Are there money for open source in the public sector? Definitely. For example, in Finland, we have, uh, we have a, a law that uh, for any new uh, software that needs to be go get bought by the government, they have to first look at free software alternatives. It doesn't work that well because still the, uh, the decision makers uh, go to Hawaii because Oracle are having this <laughs> nice seminar that they have to look at first. But, uh, but uh, more and more uh, they are uh, forced to use of So is that more money in the service sector then, or in the license, or, or uh, 
Probably in the service, yeah, I would say. Yeah, but you still, you still get money for doing the development, okay? That's a kind of a service, but you can still go then to other countries and sell, and, and sell it again and again. So in that because time, it becomes a product. So if there's a product funding, that's all, not your services. Yeah. I mean, yeah, services, I the, the nice thing with government is that they don't care if you pro, uh, you uh, have it on GitHub or just have it open source and give it to them. And if they're only one who have it and they don't distribute it, you can sell it to everybody else. You have to sell. But it's still, uh, but the one bidding then is probably services companies locally that use these open source tools yeah. and, yeah. and implement it for the government. So it's mostly a services business. Uh, thank you. More questions? Where do we stand on time? Where should we stay with what? We don't care about time. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so good, we don't care. <laughs> but actually, the thing is that uh, if you do an open source uh, uh, company, uh, open source product for the Finnish government, and then you go to Brussels and say that I have this one, uh, I can sell it. Uh, then you need to need to modify it so it also work for according to Brussels law. And the same thing. So you still have a business. You are selling a product that they can't just share because you have different... Uh, uh, parameters for those because parameters could be hidden. Mm -hmm. In in the United States, it can be challenging to do government work because of different clearances, and you have to go through partners. But there is also that push, as we're hearing in other governments, of looking at open source, and so things like the Linux Foundation and others educating the governments and what are the advantages and what to do about them is a big movement and push as well, so that there's an understanding because. But the worst thing that can happen is, you know, Dimitri keeps saying it's better software. You don't want the old thought, well, it's free, it's got to be buggy, and you want to make sure that it's reliable. But we definitely see that, I definitely see that as a U.S. person here, <laughs> um, that with the, it's a big business in the government um, in all the different agencies, but there's some extra costs to do business with them. So do any of you see that there's a, a big growth in such companies that create software for, for the public service, for the public sector? It's a question for you. You are the one who's looking at the business cases. I don't know. I think, honestly, I think there's the service. I mean, we don't look, it's mostly a service business. We don't look much at and talk much to the service players in each country. Uh, yes, they're, you know, utilize some of our portfolio company software in some cases, but but it's, uh, to me, it's a as an investor, it's a boring market. So. <laughs> and I think it might be more difficult to exit such company, like the one working strongly with defense also. It's, you know, for some reasons, unsexy for VCs because it might be harder to sell such companies for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this, but you have to prove that it's not buggy and works. Isn't that about a billion times easier now than it was back like when I did it in 97, 98? Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. That Because then it was no examples. Now we have. Right. But it's educating, I'm saying it's yeah. educating, in my world, educating legislators yeah. and those that are involved because you, in, in, you know, you're saying someone from Microsoft took them to Hawaii. The lobbyists are pushing whatever their special interests are. And yeah, I think of uh, government as just another vertical that you're in. Is is your software helping that vertical? It's another highly regulated industry. Can be. You mentioned defense, like the U.S. and defense. There's. Let's just say I worked for Oracle, and I I literally thought one day. But I thought I was going to come in, someone knock on the door that I was about to get not only fired but arrested because I talked to somebody that was in the government and that wasn't what my role was. So I was like, oh, okay, sorry. But yeah, so there's there's there could be additional cost for the business itself to do business with the government, but there's opportunity there for sure. Mm -hmm. We talked about infrastructure, tech infra, um, ops infra <laughs> with EFP and CRM, uh, and also AI. What, in your opinion, your personal opinion, is what's next for open source? The thing is, with the whole idea with open source is that, that uh, if you come to me and ask, what next for MariaDB? I don't know. They don't need to know because if I have enough customers uh, and I follow the customers and keep them happy, 
They are the one who is debating that direction, that direction, as long as I follow them and part of the new thing. And actually, the most thing is open source from that, uh, for example, AI, that uh, they had this one company who, who were doing lots of publicity, and suddenly you have uh, tens of open source companies who are doing the same. We are just, in some sense, we are followers, either other things or our customers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I come to Foston for the last 20 years to find out what's next for open source. <laughs> I'm mostly retired now, but I go to Foston every year because I go around and I read the stuff, I see all the small projects, I see projects growing, I see stuff I know nothing about. It's good to kind of put yourself in your place, but yeah. I used to know a lot, now I don't. <laughs> I think it's a lot around the AI stack that, that is being created all the time. There's a lot of initiatives on every layer and bits and pieces, but there will be formed some winning combination of, of AI infrastructure for then any company really building solutions for their own needs. Uh, I think that would be massive. Uh, I think just. I would like to see open source just being continued to be talked about more. <coughs> I'll age myself, but the younger generation and in schools, um, kids in their um, teens and twenties, they're so connected and they're hungry for information and and seemingly easy just to reach out. And that's <laughs> such what the open source source community is. So. Yeah, what is going to be the next thing? I don't know, but really getting that generation, and that they aren't just all going to be bots and AI doing it, but helping them come in and share those ideas, it seems natural for that age group, and how to tie them in. So that begs the question, so is the open source community aging? Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm not, but everybody else is. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so it, it needs to uh, uh, so. become younger. I don't know. Like uh, there is a lot of commercial open source being created every year, and I think there is more. You know, it will be more in twenty four than it used to be in twenty three, and it was more in twenty three than it was in twenty two. So, I think it's kind of growing as one, one piece of it is aging, but you know, there is also some. I, I think there is a new way for uh, entrepreneurs to choose open source, not, not because it's free again, but because it's kind of more beneficial way of developing software, mm -hmm. where they can leverage the community, where they can leverage open source nature of their code to go to market. Because some of the customers they actually want open source, they prefer open source. Yeah. So that differentiates them. Why are you starting when the open source ERP, not, not another ERP, with, uh, but a closed source? But I think there will be much clear, better and clearer kind of business models and more restrictive kind of licenses and, and also success cases around that that will spur others to follow and, and be more active. I don't, I, I don't think we will, um, I hope it's also that, I mean, the big, big all the big multi-trillion tech companies who are so far have built a lot of their infra on, on open source and not paying and, and earning a lot of money in, 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 in in, in serving serving their, their services to the to their market, I think that that uh, that will not be in a similar way possible in the, in the future. And gradually, it will be more fair. I think. I used to say in my talks back in the day that I choose open source because I, you know, how good I could get. If I start working on Microsoft Windows, I was extremely limited how good I can get. You know, it can do best certification, you can do this, but you have no, you extremely limited information. When I started working with open open source, it was up to me how good I could get it. There was no one else who could limit me. And that was a big decision part for me. Uh, I didn't like to be limited, and that's still valid now. Yeah. I remember when we had all those Microsoft uh, CD documentation. <laughs> <laughs> Documentation might be wrong, but if you have access to the code, most of it I can't read, but I can see other people read it, I can ask people about it, I can search it, I mean, it's not like you understand it all, no one ever does nowadays, but you can still look at it, which makes a big difference. You can run test cases, you can, you know, change it to see what happens. It gives you more confidence. Yeah, in using it. 
All right. Any final question? Otherwise, I thank the panel. Thank you for. Uh,